So you've officially installed Ubuntu on VirtualBox, but the screen resolution isn't quite working for you and you might be missing some features. Well, that's because you need to install the guest additions package from VirtualBox. I'll be showing you how to do that today. And some of the benefits here include one, being able to share files between your VM and the host computer, two, better driver support, including a graphics driver that's going to fix this resolution for us so we don't have this really small screen, and three, being able to use the clipboard if set with the VM and the host. All right, now understanding some of these things that we're going to be gaining from doing this setup, let's start out by going up to devices and clicking insert guest additions CD image. That will actually mount a CD directly from VirtualBox and if for some reason it doesn't launch, you can go to optical drives and choose a disk file. If you go to the C program files, Oracle VirtualBox directory, you'll be able to find VBox guest editions because it's an add-on that comes with VirtualBox when you install it. You can click open and that will also mount and add this image in called VBox GAS 7.0 or whatever version of the additions tools that you have. Anyways, clicking on that will open up a folder. Now there's many things in here that can be ran. But in order to run this here on Ubuntu, we want to go to the auto run.sh file. We can right click on it and run it as a program. Since you need administrative privileges to run it, you'll have to put in your administrative password and authenticate. After that, it's going to begin installing things for you. But before it's done, make sure you read the bottom as it will tell you not obviously whether things failed or not. This says that the system is currently not set up to build kernel modules please install the GCC make Perl packages from your distribution. So it actually failed to install the guest editions modules. So we're going to have to press enter, which is gonna to return to this window. So what we'll have to do is actually launch a terminal in order to do something real quick. And in the terminal, we're actually missing some tools for us to be able to compile those drivers. So we need to do sudo apt install, and we want the build essential package. This will install all those tools that was mentioned by the installer that we're missing. We press enter, type in our password for the administrative user and hit enter to allow the package to install. It'll take a few minutes as everything gets installed. But before we get there, check out delva.ai. Not sure how to start using AI for your business? Don't let your company fall behind. Start building an AI strategy today with Delva's AI consulting. Schedule some time with Delva's AI consultants and start integrating AI into your business. Again, check it out at delva.ai. There's a link in the description below. And now that we're back and the packages are finished installing, we can go back to our CD over here or just find the previous window you had opened. In here, we're gonna do the same step, autorun.sh. We're gonna run as program. We're gonna authenticate ourselves and give it a few moments to start actually compiling and adding the tools necessary for guest additions. As you can see here, it says building the modules for the current kernel that we're running. This is a good sign because it's actually updating the boot file in order to run the tools. And it says that the guest additions kernel modules will be replaced after a system restart and then press return to close this window. So this is fantastic. This is good news if you see it like this with no error whatsoever, no messages. Again, look out for those errors because they blend in a little bit. Anyways, we're gonna press enter and now we're ready to restart the system. You can restart it in multiple ways. I just like going through the operating system itself, hit power off, hit restart, restart, and then give it a few moments here to actually load back in. While things are loading here, make sure to smash that like button for me for more Linux tips and tricks and kernel updates. Let's see what has been updated. Currently the resolution still looks messed up, but we can actually fix that by going to display settings and setting the proper resolution. Mine's 1920 by 1080, I'm gonna apply that and then keep the changes. Notice how I now have the proper resolution. You'll also probably notice how it's a little easier to use the system with less stuttering. Anyways, I'm gonna do Control F and switch over to the full screen view. Congratulations if you made it this far, you've successfully installed the Guest Editions CD. I, I do wanna talk about some of the benefits of the Guest Editions tools. If we go over to Settings and down to Shared Folders, you can now use folders shared amongst this virtual machine and the host computer that is actually holding the virtual machine inside of it. It's a fantastic way to get things between operating systems quickly and efficiently. But my favorite tool is actually in general, go over to the advanced tab and you'll notice there is a shared clipboard, which by default is disabled. If we enable this, depending on which direction you wanna go, bi-directional means you can go between the host computer that has the VM on it 
and the VM itself. Guest to host means only from the VM to whatever's hosting the VM. Host to guest is only from whatever is currently holding the VM to the VM itself. For me, I'm just gonna do the host to guest option. And then the drag and drop feature allows you to drag and drop items between desktops. Congratulations if you made it this far, you've successfully installed the VirtualBox guest editions. In order to check and make sure that things are properly installed, you can start a terminal backup and then we can actually do LS mod pipe and we'll grep for something called VBox guest. Notice that we have something running. Another way would be to check the processes as well. And notice that you have this VBox add-on service running in the background. You can also check the version that you currently have using VBox client space dash dash version. I have the 7.0 release with a revision number at the end. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.